Welcome to Bereans at the Gate. This is our video blog for March 28th, 2018, and there's much to discuss. Let's start with the omnibus bill that was recently passed by Congress and signed by President Trump. I have a feeling our economists might have a lot to say about this bill. Let's start with uh, Jeff. What do you think about the bill? Let's start with what's in the bill first. Sure. Uh, from what I understand, and, and, and it's going to be really hard to say what's in the bill since no one read it before they passed yeah, it. Like, uh, but yeah. what we've heard is, is there's money for everything. There's money for defense. There's money for... Uh, some of the de democratic priorities as well. Uh, there's certainly no spending restraint in it. Uh, the omnibus uh, is something that's, the only people that didn't get the spending they wanted were all the people who wanted the wall. They didn't get enough money for that, I understand. So uh, the, the unfortunate thing is, is, is uh, the Republicans talk about their being against uh, big government and spending, and they really basically endorsed all those yeah. things. They were right along with the Democrats to spend, uh, to in um, bolster up the insurance, the uh, Obamacare health insurers. Mm -hmm. So uh, for, for those that are concerned about fiscal rectitude, there is no party representing that interest in Washington right now. It's fair to say, Bert, yeah. what do you think? I think the same thing, it's spending out of control. Uh, no, no end in sight, no one cares. Uh, so we'll see what happens in the longer term. You know, interest rates are turning mm -hmm. upward down just a little bit. Uh, Short-term rates have creep, crept upward, so we'll see what effect that has. What kind of effect are we looking at long term if debt national debt continues to grow? What's the impact economically? Well, I think the real uh, turning point would be if our credit uh, rating uh, were reduced. That would be an immediate signal that we were in trouble. Otherwise, because you know the, the nation has no uh, end date, there is a certain sense to where as long as the debt is not judged to be too high, you know, so far as we know, it could go on indefinitely. Now, I don't think that will happen. I think at some yeah. point in time, it will be too much. So judged by the people who hold the debt, right. essentially. Right. Okay, all right, Mark, what are you gonna say? What we're seeing here, I think, is the prediction of people like Aaron Valdosky years ago and the public choice theorists all along, yeah. is that at some point, and this is also, I would say, it goes beyond that too to other, other issues, but we're seeing a complete abandonment of fiscal restraint because there's no incentive to be restrained. Your constituents want it, you can't lose by giving it to them, you can only gain, yeah. be reelected, give it to them. And everybody does the same thing, and we get these massive spending bills continuously. So uh, can we pretty much say this is the death of the Tea Party, if there ever was such a thing, where the Tea Party was supposedly <laughs> yeah, there for fiscal restraint, upset at Obama's. So, yeah, if, it was a, if it is alive, nobody's listening to it. Yeah. Uh, or if it, maybe the, uh, it folded, maybe it folded the, uh, into the Trump no, thing. No, but but the, uh, the conservative uh, folks in Congress, uh, that, that coalition, did vote against the Freedom Trump. Caucus. The Freedom right. Caucus. Yeah. So, and, and, and that would be yeah. where those Tea Party people yeah, kind of resonate. That's true. But, but they're small. They're just not yeah. effective to, uh, to uh, carry the debt. And rate. the president shows no interest in restraining no. this whatsoever. No. He was no. only complaining a little bit about the bill because of the lack of border no. wall no. funding. No. That's really about all that he threatened to veto. No. So. And we occasionally hear conservative commentators talk about us passing debt onto our grandchildren. Yeah. So yeah. What will happen to this debt, Jeff? Okay. What, what do you feel about? Uh, well, you know, th there is a case, that, there's a long case on, and the, the debt's really not a problem. There's a large subset of economists and, and certainly uh, politicians that don't think it's a problem because we owe it all to ourselves. And they will point to countries like Japan, and Japan has well over 200% of its uh, uh, debt to GDP ratio is kind of the way you'd scale it. And we're, we're only down at 104%, so it's not a problem. <laughs> we go like Japan. Uh, the problem, of course, is, is we don't save very much, which means we have to borrow. Yeah. Japan at least can, uh, its, its population saves a lot such that they mm -hmm. are maintain low interest rates. But if interest rates were to spike and we don't save and we have to borrow, that could be the death knell. Uh, when, when Greece had their problems, uh, they were at 4% interest rate, roughly being able to borrow what the rest of the European nations were. And when their crisis broke, within one year, their T-bill rate was roughly at 100%. I mean that, and when that happens, it's it's in the words game over, man. Uh, yeah. You know on yeah. that. But how long? We are the biggest ec economy in the world, uh, and and we're going to uh, continue to be the place where people will will come. So we're going to get a lot more latitude. I'm afraid they'll let us get a much bigger noose before it tightens around our neck. So the problem could get get worse for a while. Can, can we extend the biblical principle for individuals to nations then, and talk about how bad debt can be? 
<laughs> I, I think so. I, in fact, I think you may be teasing me because uh, sort of. I, yeah, I, just a little I'm bit. going out to a conference <laughs> next week, and one of my the paper that I'm going to present is on the national debt and the burden of the debt and how that affects with the Christian worldview. And we are passing that burden on to our uh, our, our uh, progeny in the, in the future. And my, the case that I'm going to make is I'm going to tie it to a concept called odious debt yeah. uh, and, and say that this is an odious debt is when you pass mm -hmm. on debt to someone uh, that ha never had any benefit from that debt and so forth. And w I will certainly be arguing that that is inconsistent with a biblical worldview. Yeah. So, okay, good for you. All right, next issue, uh, Stormy Daniels. We had a, just so that we're clear, an adult film star go on national television and a national news program and spend the entirety of that program outlining her affair, alleged affair, with uh, who would become the President of the United States. This affair took place, uh, what, 2005 or 2006, I think, a so a little bit ago. time ago. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she claims that she was paid off because of this affair so that she, so that she wouldn't talk. No one seems to argue that she was paid off. <laughs> There's some argument about what she was paid off for. I think it's kind of silly to think she was paid off for not doing something, but that's a different discussion, I suppose. And, I, you know, I guess this is still around. It's still getting some traction. Uh, but I don't get the sense that this is the kind of thing that's going to topple the president or lead to his removal. Uh, what do you guys think, Mark? Well, I mean, look, first of all, I think it's probably plausible that he did it. He did engage uh, yeah, in this affair. I want to be fair from a legal standpoint. Mm -hmm. You know, fair, but very. let's say very plausible. Sure. All right, it's, it's very plausible he did it. Uh, I really don't think it's going to make a big difference in the long run. I mean, the media might like to make it a big difference, and I'm not saying it's unimportant from a moral standpoint, but the media wants to make it a huge issue. They're trying very hard to do that, but I, based on other precedents, precedents I don't know how they're going to make it, make it stick. In the long run. What do you mean based on other presidents? You mean like Kennedy, uh, Clinton, Clinton, Kennedy? Yeah. I mean, too many of them have engaged in this. And sure. It's not that commonplace makes it acceptable, but commonplace does make it um, such a, 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 a relatively lesser issue in terms of the, the presidency itself. But even at the time that Clinton engaged in his behavior, culturally it was frowned upon. It was, well, at least by, by, by some people. By most people, I, I think. think by most people, yeah, it's fair I would to agree. Say. Yeah, yeah. You uh, could argue about whether or not it was impeachable, but most people frowned on the frowned on the behavior. Yeah. yeah. No, I don't think they frowned on that behavior nearly as much as they did. Well, we do see a little bit of a difference, but I don't want to. <laughs> I don't really. I'm not interested in defending the president all that much. No. But well, this is a consensual relationship between adults. Now, granted, someone was paid off, but that's. Yeah. Well, the, the, well, let's the, remember the president the impeachment, was, the impeachment about President Clinton was about lying under exactly oath, right. which is a different. It he was, but it was also an affair that involved someone much oh, yeah. younger who reported to him, so you don't have the same kind of consensual issues there. Right. And then he was, as you said, impeached for reasons that were he connected, was, yeah. but connected not part of it. So there, there are differences here. Do you think sure. if the president had an affair in the Oval Office right now, and we could document it, that that would change things? Or are we really just talking about if he engages in illegal activity? Wow. Now... Yeah, now. What if it happened right now? Oh, Something I think similar. there'd be I think there'd be uh, more of a, a fuss by the media, obviously, mm -hmm. but but for reasons that are nefarious, the the the, the, the mainstream media they would like sure. to get rid of Trump. That's just a way to get rid of him. And the now, main, mainstream media was interested in protecting the president, President Clinton. Yes, they were not interested in protecting President not, Trump. Not Trump, but yeah. go beyond that. Sure, I think there'd still be a greater um, controversy raised by it among members of Congress, for example. And among in the general public, among, among Republicans in general, right, a greater controversy than there was. I still don't think it'd be enough to. It wouldn't be I, enough, though. I, 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 don't think it'd be I enough. hate to say it. I don't think it'd be enough. The, I don't things think, have changed. I don't think it, it would be enough. I think there's another issue more nefarious on the media than than that. And and I did not watch the 60 Minutes thing, but the, this is indicative. Just like Mr. Trump is a is a downward spiral in terms of ethical standards, certainly at public level. Uh, likewise, the American people, we had apparent, the, the thing I did see about the interview is that like 22 million people watch it. Yeah, yeah very uh, highly rated. Sex sells, yep. so they got viewership. So they're wanting, they're, they're, sure. even if they don't want to take them out, they want viewers Let's and they got them, sure. uh, unfortunately. Yeah. Bert, you have any thoughts? I don't think it would matter at all. <laughs> I've got thoughts I could share, but I think yeah. we've said enough. Yeah. I, I am so. interested to see if the Christian right at all changes their tone on Mr. Trump <laughs> through all this. I haven't noticed that yet. They've defended him pretty staunchly from the Stormy Daniels allegations. I'm not sure that's going to shift all that much. They'll raise one eyebrow. I mean, which, they'll, they'll say with, with some legitimacy, <laughs> they'll say, with, and I would say this too, I mean, that was a decade ago. We kind of knew he was a 
you know, <laughs> that, he had these proclivities. <laughs> <laughs> right, we before, before we left. Yeah. So, so, and I would, I would support that in this sense, in terms of the people that say, well, we should run him out of office. The people that voted for Mr. Trump were well aware of this aspect of his character, no question. and that did not matter to them. They voted anyway. No question. So that, yeah. I think that... But, but here, let, quickly, let's get, to, let's get to the deeper issue yeah. in this. This is a, a, a timeless issue. Sure. Virtuous rulers versus the policies they actually propose and implement, or able to propose and implement. That puts Christians in a real, a bind in a real sense, right? On the one hand, they want virtuous uh, off officials in government. We, we do want them. We should want them. On the other hand, is that the only thing that we look at when we vote for them? I, I, I can't see that it can be the only thing. It never has been in the history of, yeah. of politics, and I don't think it ever will be the only thing for Christians. It's important. How important is, is always the question, depending on the particular issue. Uh, arguably, right now, it's not all that important. Not to most for Christians. Many, for many Christians, at least. For many, at least, okay. yeah. Uh, we're going to conclude our segment today by reflecting on the fact this is Easter weekend, Coming up, how do you make a segue between what we just talked about and Easter weekend? I don't know, but let's try. Um, and Dr. We Clawson, need forgiveness, everyone. <laughs> we do. Very, very good. We I do. appreciate that. From the ridiculous so, to the sublime. We're going to allow our resident <laughs> theologian and, in general, wonk, Dr. Clausen, wax eloquent about the importance of Easter. Well, first of all, I do think we need to give, give Easter more press. Christmas gets all the attention. One month of Christmas, and sometimes even more. Easter gets one week or less but it's arguably just as important as Christmas time. If Jesus had not died on that cross and risen from the dead, as 1 Corinthians says, we would still be in our sin, our faith would be in vain, we would be lying about our faith. And yet he's risen, and because he is risen, we have hope as believers. So Easter time is immensely important, and I would urge everyone out there as a Christian to uh, try to attend some Easter services. Monday, Thursdays, tomorrow night, and Good Friday services are often held at churches. Obviously, Easter Sunday, celebrate Easter Sunday with all that's in you. That's Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. indeed. That's right. Well, thanks very much for viewing. Uh, we appreciate your interest. As always, leave comments, and we will try to get them in the future. Thank you very much.